Hey, it's Ozzy here with a quick video to show you how to quickly gauge whether the demand for a product is on the up or on the down. And I'm going to show you how to do this with a free tool. Okay, so here we are back at the Google search engine, as I have started to call it recently. And all we're going to do here is we're going to search for Google Trends. Okay. Now, this is a very powerful tool by Google, which is going to help us identify whether the demand for any search is trending up or down. Now, the screen is loading now with uh, all kinds of things. And you can see here stories trending now. OK, Formula One race queen. Now, if you run a news blog or a news website, then this is somewhere where you should spend the first few minutes of every day. That is if you publish daily, because that's going to show you exactly what people are searching for. And of course, you can filter this out by location so you can see who's searching for what were. OK, so you can see here at the top there is a drop down menu and just be aware that Google may change around the interface. Of course, I can't help that. So currently there is a drop down menu here at the top where you can choose the country. And I'm going to leave that as the United States. And then there is another drop down menu where you can choose the category. OK, so I'm going to ignore all this and I'm going to go here to the top to the search bar and I'm going to type iPhone 6 case. In fact, let me do iPhone 6 leather case. OK, let's press enter and let's see what that looks like. OK, so interest over time. This is the 7th of Jan here, and you can see that there's actually an uptake here in January compared to December. Now, this is really cool. Down here, you'll see a list of countries, and these are the countries that have the most interest in what I just searched for. So this tells me that the United Kingdom, where I currently reside, is the most interested in this topic. So if I was to start selling iPhone 6 cases, which I may or may not be already, then this would be the place to sell them. Now, there is other cool stuff down here, and this is related topics and related queries. And as you've probably gauged already, these results are based on queries. This is a reflection of what people are searching for in Google. And of course, keep in mind that a lot of product searches are going to be taking place in Amazon and not in Google. And Google doesn't have access to that data. So if you're actually searching for a product, then you would do well to go to Amazon bestsellers and check out whether there is a demand for that product there or not. And I'll put a link in the description below this video to my other video on how to find bestsellers in Amazon and how to navigate through the bestsellers, because that will come in handy for you if you want to gauge product demand. OK, so let me go back to the top here and point out that you've got some filters here, for example, 12 months. This is in the past 12 months, but now let's go to the past five years. This is going to give you a much better picture of what it is that you're looking at in terms of trending. And you can see here, this is obviously when the iPhone 6 was released. And you can see that this paints a different picture, doesn't it? You can see that this product is definitely on the way down. And this is really cool. You can click the compare box here and add another search term. So I'm going to type in there iPhone 6 case without the leather. OK, and this is actually going to compare one search term against the other. So you can see here that by comparison, the iPhone 6 case is a way more popular search term than the iPhone 6 leather case. Of course, a leather case is really a wallet. And most people, when it comes to smartphones, at least right now, have cases rather than wallets. But if you were looking at the iPhone 6 accessories market as a niche to enter, this would be invaluable because this right now tells you that if you're going to do this, if you're going to catch this market on the downtrend, then the thing to be selling is iPhone 6 cases rather than leather cases. And this gets even better. You can add another comparison. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add iPhone 4. In fact, let me change that to iPhone five case. What I want to determine here is if I want to get into a niche selling older model cases, 
then which phone should I target? So let's see what that says. This is exciting, isn't it? It's loading the results now. And you can see that the iPhone 6 case is the winner, as you would have expected, of course, because it's a newer model. But interestingly enough, the iPhone 5 case is more popular than the iPhone 6 leather case. And let's add one more. If I was actually doing this for real, then I would actually also search for iPhone 6 leather wallet because not everybody is going to search for the iPhone 6 leather case. Okay, so let's load that in and let's wait for the results. And keep in mind that this is set to the past five years so we can see a really long picture. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually remove the iPhone 5 case and the iPhone 6 case. And all you do here, by the way, is you hover your cursor over this section and you'll see the three dots. You click on that and then you remove. So now we can see a graph for the iPhone 6 leather case and for the iPhone 6 leather wallet. And as I suspected, most people search for leather case rather than leather wallet. So if you were selling a leather wallet, you would still want to target the keyword leather case as well as leather wallet. So you can see how powerful this tool actually is. You could spend half a day here researching terms and that would be time well spent. Just being able to see visually whether that demand is actually going up or down is very powerful. And let me just point out one last thing that some products or services or whatever you're searching for may be seasonal. OK, so it may be on the downtrend when you look, but make sure you get a good segment. So, for example, I have a five year segment here, but you can go down to well, you can go down to the past hour and the past four hours. This is incredible. Google is actually serving data of what people are searching for in the past hour. But anyway, my point is that there is a customized time range that you can click on that drop down menu. And this will enable you to get a good time segment. For example, if the product is seasonal, let's say the demand rises in summer, then if you're looking at a 12 month segment, you're only going to see one peak and then you're going to see that the demand is tapering down and that may lead you to erroneously think that the product or the service is on a downtrend. So what you want to do is get a bigger snapshot, a bigger time frame. And if you do that for a seasonal product, you'll notice in this example that every summer there is a spike and that might well be a very good product or a niche to get into. If you know that there is a predictable and stable demand from the market, even though it's seasonal. So as you can see, this is good research. I love this tool. You should be using this as part of your toolkit to do market research. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got use out of it. I'll put a link in the description, of course, to any resources, including a link to Google Trends. And while you're here, please subscribe to the channel. And that way you can keep getting all these good videos. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I shall catch you in the next video.